I was born with cystic fibrosis. It's a genetic disease. I wasn't diagnosed uh, when I was born. It was actually three years later um, that um, after many colds, flus, chest infections, and generally just not putting on weight. Um, and my, after my parents had visited many doctors, mm -hmm. they were able to find a doctor that could send me off for a sweat test, um, which measures how much salt uh, you sweat out. And if you are over a certain percentage, then you are mm -hmm. usually diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. I joined the clinic at um, Princess Margaret Hospital and had ongoing care and management at home for um, medications. Mm -hmm. Mum and Dad had to learn how to uh, do physiotherapy on me to um, clear my lungs of any mucus. As I entered into teenage years, um, my visits into hospital were starting to get um, more frequent. So uh, still on intravenous antibiotics and physio and making sure I eat lots of uh, fatty foods to keep on keep on that weight uh, which at the time I actually thought was awesome you know I could eat what I wanted uh, not have to worry about that but also um, keep up with good exercise as well to keep those lungs moving. I became a Christian when I was 18 so it was you know such wonderful things happening at the time as well as not so good with getting um, worse with chest infections and I'm talking uh, up to six weeks at a time in hospital um, sometimes five times a year so it was it was quite often we got married um, back in 2004 um, to lovely Tim we moved to Boddington um, so Tim could achieve his permanency teaching permanency and um, I found that my health really went down um, quite a bit um, in that um, time that we were in Boddington for two years and that's when transplant was becoming more of a, a realisation as in um, both lungs needed to go and be replaced. Talking to other lung transplant recipients and even other organ recipients, um, I, I must I, I thank my faith that they these people seem to have a, quite a fear of, of dying and a fear of yeah not going in for their operation and not coming out again and I never felt that was something that would happen to me um, I believe that was God supporting me went on the transplant list um, and you never know how many people are on there um, it's not about that it's not about a uh, a race to see who gets the organs first because there's so much matching that has to be done in terms of um, blood types for example and other diseases that or, or viruses that the um, the organ donors might have had in their life. So 10 months after I'd gone onto the waiting list a friend of mine he was a, a gentleman in his 60s exactly the same scenario as myself with cystic fibrosis um, he got transplanted and, um, you know, I'd been sort of thinking, I'm not ready to have the big surgery yet. All those 10 months until the day before when I heard the great news that he had gone through surgery and he was fine. And I thought, oh gee, I wish it was, I'm ready, I'm ready. That's exactly how I felt. And 24 hours later, I got the call. We went in at about midnight and um, uh, by five o'clock, 5 a.m., um, I was given some sleeping tablets just to sort of get calm. And yeah, there were complications during the surgery, um, which, you know, the doctor said to me, they can only prepare so much. They can only go by what, you know, shows them on the scans. My lungs were, I had a 14 and a half hour operation. And I don't know what the average is, but I've been told that's extremely long. Um, I nearly died on the table. Um, so they had to um, administer, um, I had to go, I had to have a machine to breathe for me, basically. It's not always needed for patients, even when they're having one lung out, you can still breathe with the other one. Um, but yeah, they had to completely um, attach my, my bodily systems to a machine um, in order for me to breathe and what they'd found was that after many years of infections in my lungs um, my lungs were just falling apart and um, Tim was and and the rest of my family uh, were saying you know it was touch and go and they were praying and th they were told maybe not to expect me to wake up and I really felt that during 
during the surgery, during that night, I know that God was with me. And um, the best way that I can explain it in, in our human terms is like when you're dropping your car off at the mechanics and you go and sit in the waiting room and have your dodgy coffee or dodgy tea. Um, that's exactly how it, I can explain that. Um, I felt like Jesus was sitting next to me having a dodgy coffee and, and my body was like the car in the workshop. Um, and Tim had a, an amazing dream that night as well with me holding Jesus' hand. So, you know, I just think, wow, that gives me tingles thinking about it um, 10 years later because it's absolutely true. This is absolutely what happened. I never doubted not coming back and, and being, you know, living my life to the full, having that second chance and living it to the full. On paper, I, I still have cystic fibrosis. I've had a lung transplant. But my goodness, what God has done, what God is doing through health professionals, um, through, through myself and my outlook and how I live my life and how I manage my life. Um, yeah, it, this truly is a second chance and I really have been healed.